Hello and welcome to MM um, Design or mm, Design. <laughs> My name is Maria and today we're going to be talking about how colors were paired on the runways of major houses during the fall winter 2024. I wanted to get started by talking about some different color combinations and go into a little bit of color theory before we head into the actual examples of it. To begin our journey, we'll just start off from the bases of it and we're gonna take a look at the color wheel. The color wheel is basically a circular representation of all the colors just because they flow into one another and this concept really helps us to understand the nature of colors and their combination. At the core of the color wheel we have the primary colors which are red, blue and yellow. These colors are pure and they cannot be created by other colors in the color wheel. They're kind of the starting blocks for all the other colors in the color wheel. When we combine two primary colors we get a secondary color. With these combinations, we get orange, purple, and green. They give us depth and vibrancy to the color palette. Now let's explore the intermediate colors that are between the primary and secondary colors, and they're called tertiary colors. So basically, for instance, if we talk about red and orange in between, it's like our reddish orange, or in between a green and a blue, it will be like something like a teal color. And basically, there is no stopping it. There is a very gradual change to the color, so the color combinations could be endless. Now let's talk about the characteristics of color now. We have the hue, which is basically the purest version of a certain color. For instance, you can see here, it is the most outer wheel on this color wheel. We see these colors are bright, and strong. Next we have the tint. Well, this is when we add a little bit of white to the hue. You can see this is the next ring in. This results in more of a pastel kind of colors that are much more softer and airy in nature. Now let's explore the tones and this is when we add gray to the color. So the colors become much more diluted, very um, muted. This creates our more muted and sophisticated color combinations. They're ideal for adding complexity and depth to your outfit. These tones are represented by the third color wheel from the outside. <laughs> Lastly, we have shade, which is created by adding black to the hue. This produces much more darker and richer tones bring a sense of drama and elegance to your outfits. And obviously these are the ones that are presented in the, the smallest ring right here. Here you can see the hues are presented as a gradient of color. We also have saturation is another way of saying how much tone applied to the hue. And value is basically saying how much like a lighter to darker color is or how much black or white has been added to the color in, in order to get it. Here's how saturation and value interact together to create all of these different tones and colors from just one red. In reality, a color wheel looks more like a 3D version where we have different values and saturations. Obviously, this is not a completed version, so it more looks like a sphere than anything else. On the screen right now, you can see the Pantone's color swatches from New York Fashion Week for Fall Winter 2024. And the following is the London Fashion Week swatches. I will be demonstrating the color combinations using these and will later show examples of some of these from the runways. Now that we know the characteristic of the colors, now let's move on to the color combinations. First up, we have monochromatic combinations. This involves having different tones, shades, and tints of one color. So for instance, right now I am wearing a monochromatic outfit, but you're saying, well, pink is not red, but pink was created from red by adding a little bit of white, or in some cases, a lot of white. If I were also wearing maybe, ooh, so for instance, if I had maybe like a, a clutch like this, or my shoes would be like more of a burgundy. This would also be a monochromatic color. So 
another color that was created from red by maybe adding a little bit of black to it. Here we have Viveta having a monochromatic outfit in the blue family, having a dark blue and a baby blue. There's also plenty of examples of exactly the same red and pink, like in Balma. We also have some other monochromatic outfits on the runaways. And these were definitely the type of outfits that were more popular on the runways. Just check out my previous video about the color trends. I basically use all monochromatic outfits there. But let's head into some more complicated versions of the color combination. Just a little bit more complicated, not too much. Don't worry, you guys. Next, we have complementary color combinations. These involve pairing colors that are opposite on the color wheel. For example, blue and orange or red and green would be complementary colors. Complementary combinations are very striking and both of these colors complement and highlight each other. That's why we have Christmas green and red or maybe Halloween having more like a purple and yellow. So very, very bright, intense combinations. And let's start with the yellow and purple. A lot of uh, prints having purple and yellow in Burberry, uh, like a lot, a lot. Mostly it, they were like rose prints and we're gonna see another color combination with that print as well. Next one would be the red and green, which is very popular in the Christmas time. But we see it paired more classically, maybe a little bit muted in prints such as plaid, like in Yves Saint Laurent. We also have it paired more like a floral print in Dior and of course much more muted. We also have it in much more lighter colors like light pink and light green, like in Loewe. Next complementary combination is the light blue and orange. We see this combination in Missoni uh, with their furs, zigzags. You can see that the oranges might be a little bit on a brown side, but still very bright. And we have these blue lines as well. Another interesting option is a split complementary combination. <laughs> this involves selecting one color and pairing it to the complementary, but the ones to just to the side of it. This provides a more balanced and nuanced color combination. So for instance, if we take yellow, we have purple and magenta. If we take orange, then we would have the purple and the blue. We see this combination in Versace with just the two colors, as well as in Gucci, uh, kind of balancing it by using gray. So if we take purple, then we would have kind of like a lime green as well as an orange. We have a bunch of different combinations, but as you can see, not all of them contain all of the colors from the swatch. And this brings the color, the color combination a little bit down and it becomes not as powerful. But here in Bottega Veneta, we have the entire color combination present. And it's not crazy out there just because the colors are muted or maybe it's a tint of a certain color. If we take light blue, we would also take the orange and like the red. So we see this combination once again in Versace show where we have this kind of a bluish green dress with pink gloves and red shoes. We also see this in this greenish blue gown with the orange gloves. Another example would be a dark blue with yellow and orange. And we have that in some of the prints. And as I mentioned, sometimes one of the colors is dropped in order to get a lighter version. And finally, we have a color combination of green with orange and a little bit of magenta. We have this in Balma having the, the red, the magenta and the green purse. Just like the monochrome color combinations, we have 
a more subtle version of combining colors and that's called analogous colors. So it's basically when you have a color wheel and you choose three colors that are side by side of each other. Here are all of the combinations that I was able to make with the New York and the London Fashion Week swatches but let's see what runaways have presented with us. So we have this kind of a yellowish orange green combination and we've seen this in off-white in this gradient involving brown as well. We also have some kind of a, a very close combination in Miu Miu but with very muted colors. Next one would be kind of the yellow, orange, and red combinations. And we once again see that in Miu Miu. We also see this in Ula Johnson, as well as in Ultra Zara, also having kind of a gradient in the dresses. Victoria Beckham having more of a color blocking. We also see this in floral versions in Balenciaga. And Off-White had some interesting looks with like little buttons in those color variations. Burberry also had some feather gradients uh, in like the, a huge coat. We also had like a little detail there. We also see them in much lighter versions of the tints in like lighter orange, lighter yellow, and lighter pink. Another one would be an orange, red, and more of a magenta versions. We've once again seen this in Balenciaga. We see some kind of a combination of those in Fendi, but maybe one of the color missing. Uh, Chanel having little flowers in magenta and orange combined together. We also see this in Stella McCartney having pink, orange, and red combo in the, the dresses. Moving on with the color wheel of like more of the red to purple, we have a little bit of that in Gucci as well as in Balma, but this could also be more of a monochromatic outfit as well. Just the colors are really close together. <laughs> Going along from magenta to blue, kind of having purple in there as well, we see this combination in Carolina Herrera, Etro, uh, in their plaid, just a color combination of like the scarf and the dress and the boots. We also see this in Chanel. We also see this in Miu Miu with kind of like a blue bag and the purple sweater. Next one going from like a little bit of purple into like blue and a lighter blue. We see this once again in Etro. They had a lot of color combinations. Going into greens now a little bit. We had I think one print but here it is. Here is an example. <laughs> If you're enjoying this content so far, please consider to like this video, comment something nice down below, and subscribe if you're not already. Next, we have the triadic color combination. This involves choosing three colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel. For instance, red, yellow, and blue, triadic combinations give us very stimulating, very bright combinations, but yet they are balanced. And once again, you can maybe make one of the colors a little bit darker or softer or lighter in order to bring that combination a little bit down. Maybe you don't want to, it to be overpowering. Maybe you don't want it to be too loud. Sometimes people all together just lose one of the colors and just use the two. Yellow, red, and blue combination was very popular. See this in Victoria Beckham as well as in Burberry having blue and yellow yellow combinations on the runways in some prints. We, we see a lot of red and blue combinations. Really classical versions as well, like in plaid and Tom Brown. We also see this combination in D squared 2, having a little bit of yellow in there, sometimes without the yellow as well. We also see this part of a print in Louis Vuitton. Jacques Camus also has some prints as well as in Valentino having the red and blue together. We also see this in Moschino with this floral melting print. We have white 
blue and red in there it looks a little bit on the purple side but i'm not sure if it's maybe the lighting okay once again maison margella has the plaid in the blue and the red it's a very very popular combination the blue and red together especially in plaid now we have just uh, the red and blue in gucci leaving out yellow all together so the next one would be yellow kind of a fuchsia pink with light blue combination and we see a lot of it in versace collab with dua lipa where it's very barbie-esque uh, color schemes and they have a very bright floral prints with those colors maybe a little bit of green in there we also kind of have the orange and the, mag the magenta colors in versace as well as in gucci more of a fuchsia and the blue combination in there we also have that sort of a triad um happening in eula johnson of having kind of a fuchsia pink with the yellow diesel having a very messy blue pink and kind of a peachy color in there as well we also just see the two colors of the triad in mugler having just the top in light blue and the bottoms in pink and having a very nice and muted color combination like that in Ellie Sab in their beautiful gown. Now let's take a look at the combination of orange, green, and purple. And once again, we see this in Etro and one of those blanket scarves. We also see it in their like little floral combination as once again, the blanket scarf. We also see this in Altazara in this gradient, very like water color-esque dress. Burberry had a really cool, really dark, deep purple and deep green combinations in their patterns actually the next video is going to be all about patterns so you will see those as well we see this combination in maybe a plaid version or maybe like a little floral continuation carolina herrera also had the kind of more of a dull green and a dull purple combination in their gowns miu miu as well having more of the orange and green combination leaving out the purple we also have this in Alta Zara, Rick Owens also with much more muted colors as well. Anyways, this leads us to tetriadic color combinations. So that means that you basically draw a square in the color wheel and those are the colors that are used. First one we'll be looking at will be yellow, green, red and pink kind of a magenta purple and on the example here you can see that it's more of a rectangle than the square so both of them are used but anyways it was a little bit difficult to find something like this but um here are the examples of the closest ones that i could <laughs> carolina however having kind of like a lime green with a purple skirt and more of a burgundy bow all right another one would be kind of a red magenta yellow and blue and we have these very muted colors in the sweater and here is once again the same example but just having the three colors in there from Balma. Next one would be the blue, red, orange, and purple. And we kind of have this in this outfit, but not really. <laughs> it's hard to find these combinations everywhere. We have some Ultra Zara, like very creative uh, combinations of almost kind of like water paints and their garments and i feel like they are the closest ones to show the these examples we also have this in gucci more like light blue light yellow and light purple version and i've been showing you them very bright combinations so far but we do see these combos in a more muted versions and usually it's either with a neutral color or neutral color so a lot of brown <laughs> the brown is very popular on red ways it can be combined with basically any color the reason for this is is because whenever you take 
two complementary colors paint and then mix them together to one consistency, it will become brown. Basically, any color goes well with brown just because it is used to make brown, if that makes sense. And brown can be like in different strengths, right? It can be a little bit on the beige side, which we'll get to a little bit later, or like much more brighter. It can also be a little bit more warmer, having like a little red undertone, or it could be a little bit cooler. So if you have a cooler skin tone, then go for maybe like a brown that has a little bit of green to it. Anyways, here you can see the combinations with brown. There's a lot of green with brown and the contrast of their warmth too. So the brown was a little bit warmer while the green cooled it down. We also see this in like in Dior. We just saw it in Ula Johnson. Uh, we also saw, have combinations with brown and red, a very natural combination. We have this brown and pink in D squared too. We also, once again, see the green and brown, blue and brown. We also see another like pop of color in light blue in magenta in Coach. We also see this pop of pink in Lanvin. Basically, Ula Johnson had the best time with brown, let me tell you. They just put it on everything. <laughs> Almost every model was wearing something brown or a brown print. We also see Troy Birch pairing it with a blue bag, blue marine pairing it with magenta and red. We also see this paired with some other muted like oranges and greens in Etro. Etro also having a floral print and the brown being the base of it with some light blue flowers on there. Etro was another show that really liked brown. Very 70s color scheme, that's for sure. We see brown in Versace as well, paired with some bright color pops. Off-White also had some brown coats paired with kind of a bluish purple suit. We also see this in Fendi paired with orange. We also see Jean-Paul Gaultier in their Haute Couture collection having it part of a print with a lot of orange and yellow. All right, let's move on to nude. So this is once again a warmer shade. It's a little bit, might be just a little bit off white, but on a warmer side. So we see color pops like red with the nude in Gucci, as well as the Veta. We also see this in Miu Miu, maybe paired with some gray instead of an actual bright color. Victoria Beckham paired with some lighter colors, such as pink and light yellow. We also see this in Ula Johnson. Uh, I know that there's brown in there, but there's also some beige in the prints. We also see this used in Missoni. We also see as part of kind of like a gradient zigzags with a little bit of brown in there as well. We also see this happening of course, in Etro, because beige is not that far away. We also see this a color being paired with some lighter shades in Maison Margiela, as well as in Diesel, paired with kind of a reddish pink. Proenza Schuller having it paired with yet another brown color. In Burberry, we have it in a print with yellow and a pop of green in there as well. Now let's move on to the color for cooler skinned people. <laughs> and here we have some color, color pops uh, with the gray. We see a lot of red paired with gray or maybe some orange. Uh, we also see kind of as once again, more of orangish nude paired with it, maybe a pale pink. Um, bright green, red and blue in some of the Tom Brown suits. We also see gray being as a base for some prints, like in Ultra Zara. We also see it as a base in Diesel, as well as in Louis Vuitton with some red and blue pattern peeking out of the sleeves. 
We also see it more of as a base with some blue pop of color in Viveta. A lot of it was happening in Prada with some pops of colors as well as in Miu Miu. So here you go, you guys. This is the end of the video. I hope you could take some inspiration out of it, or maybe you found a new way to pair a certain color that was already in your closet. Maybe if you would go back to the parts where I chose the swatches and their combinations and do like some screenshots and like, I don't know, print it out or like highlight which ones you can do based of or whatever you already have in your closet. Another thing that I would like to tell you that Although I've spoken a lot about how to pair some colors to your skin tone, but when then I'm talking about these color combinations that involve some, maybe some cool colors if you're warmer and you're like, but that does not make sense. So how you can wear those colors are by using them as maybe accessories that is far away from your face. So maybe a bag. If you're a warmer tone, having a blue bag purple shoes, I don't know, glue, greenish, bluish, teal skirt. So something that's far away from the face and whatever is closer to your face would be your color that has a good combination. You can also break that distance up with maybe you having a neutral color next to your face, something like white, black, brown, or gray, uh, just depending what color you are, you know, those also kind of have favorites towards which skin tone they're being worn with and in the proportion of the pattern as well. So for instance, if you are a warmer tone, having like a brown background and little blue flowers will not take away from your face just because in proportion, the color is much smaller than the color that looks good on you. Anyways, hopefully that helped you too. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to like it and leave me a nice little comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Honestly. Honestly. Anyways, if you'd like to see a little bit more of what I wear from day to day, then I encourage you to check out my Instagram. Here is how it looks like. This used to be winter and this is my handle. And yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate you and stay classy. Bye.